Hi there guys and gals. On today's episode, we're going to figure out why my burnout truck is squeaking. I mean donor truck for the prospector project. Definitely not a burnout truck. Now today won't be a very exciting episode. It's mainly going to be me placing random parts in order to get rid of the squeak. When I bought this truck, a few of these parts had already been replaced. The problem is, I think some of them were already squeaking. And frankly, it's pretty annoying. Ultimately, I plan for this to be the drivetrain for the Prospector project, which as you can tell, I finally pushed out of the shop. Yeah, I was tired of working on the frame, but my goal is to try to get this motor as top notch as possible before I pull it out of this truck. So since this is already a running driving platform, and does decent burnouts. Now would be a good time to do all the basic maintenance and little doodads to it before I pull it out. Because when I put this in the Prospector project, I really don't want to have to do all those little knick-knack things. I'd rather just stab this thing in there and be ready to go. So today, we're gonna work on the squeak. Did you hear the problem? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm tired of listening to it too. Rather than spending the time to diagnose this problem, we're just going to replace the button parts. So rather than spending the time to diagnose each problem and find out the exact thing that's squeaking, I'm just going to replace a bunch of parts. I've shown you all in past episodes where you can use a heater hose to try to find that exact location. You know, hold it up to your ear and start pushing it around. Unfortunately, that's not an exact science. But I have a general idea where the problem is. So I just took all those parts in that area and I'm just gonna replace all of them. So the majority of the noise is coming from this general area. Which, if you're a clapped out Dodge owner, you know even if you buy a new tensioner pulley, they'll go out. And you know that Cummins water pumps, at least the cheap ones, they like to go out too. But the number one thing if you're a clapped out Cummins owner, this is the wrong color belt. Yep, we got one of those fancy green belts to put on it. So we're gonna dive into this and replace tensioner pulley, water pump, and the belt. See if it fixes that problem. I guess first I gotta drain this radiator. Ah oh, crap, I should have bought antifreeze. I guess I could filter this through a dirty sock. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yep, I went ahead and found the dirtiest container I could. And I don't feel like cleaning that out, so I'll probably end up having to buy a new antifreeze. Another thing we need to work on on this truck, and since I'll be replacing the water pump, I am fairly confident that this truck doesn't have a thermostat. At one point, it already had a heating issue. This is a relatively new radiator. And of course, they lost the fan shroud. But I'm thinking at one point, they either removed that thermostat or that thing stuck open because this truck does not heat up. It runs so cool in fact that it barely made it to the quarter part of the gauge even while doing burnouts. So since we're replacing the water pump we gotta drain the antifreeze. So we'll go ahead and crack this open and find out. Does it have a thermostat or is this one stuck open? What are y'all's guesses? Leave a comment down below and we'll find out the mystery of why this clapped out Cummins doesn't heat up. Oh good, not only have I burnt this lens because of grinder sparks, now I've covered my phone in antifreeze. Fantastic. So first, we're gonna go ahead and remove this belt, which is made a lot easier by not having a fan shroud. So there's one perk. Just remember folks, if you don't have your own tools, this little task is gonna require you borrow a lot of tools from your ASC certified mechanic friend. Make sure he's not in the shop. You're gonna use a lot of them. So I'm gonna use this ASC certified motivator to get this belt off. Leave that tension off the belt tensioner. That's good. Yeah, just get it. Oh, right to the perfect radiator. Oh, well, hopefully that doesn't leak. I went ahead and 
Smash this against the radiator. Oh, we're off to a great start. Oh, come on now. Release your secrets. Hindsight's 2020, but um, might be a smart idea to put a piece of cardboard against your radiator so when you do stupid things like me, you don't break more parts. This belt actually isn't in horrible shape, so I'll keep it as an emergency spare. Next, we're going to try to tackle this thermostat right quick. Now, I was told, since this isn't leaking, I probably shouldn't remove it. So I'm going to leave it connected to this thermostat housing. Hopefully just pull all these bolts out, slide a new thermostat in there with gasket, and hopefully seal back up with no problems. Oh! Mm. Well, there's the first problem. Going to need a bigger wrench. Of course, this is 10 mil, so... I'm going to go spend the next uh, three hours trying to find a socket for this. I don't know if I can get a socket to these. I wonder if these will break loose. Oh. Well, that's encouraging. Oh. I'm just going to go ahead and say it, but I don't think this has been off for a while. Go find some more of my uh, ASC certified mechanic friend tools. See if we can knock this project out a little faster. Y'all aren't going to believe me when I tell you this, but that 10 mil socket was actually where it was supposed to be. It's almost like tradespeople, um, you know, organize their stuff. So I will definitely put it back in the wrong spot because I think that's required with the 10 mil. <sighs> oh, yeah. Much easier. No, I was hoping that would loosen it up. Apparently, find more wrenches. Nope. Nope. Ah. Found the back one. Aha! Alright. Got that loose out of the way. Go ahead and just put this right back where I took it out. That will probably lose it. All right, let's see if we can get this housing off. Oh, crap. Uh-huh. Don't worry, found it. Watch out on that one. Oh. All right, well, I'll be dang. It does have a thermostat. Oh, that helps. If you haven't figured out, folks, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm winging this. So take everything I say in this video with a grain of salt. Get the bushing out. Apparently, there's a lot of crap in there. It's possible maybe this uh, thermostat just stuck open. Well, it's definitely stuck. I probably should have watched a how-to video on this. Possibly looked at the factory service manual. I figured I've done thermostats before. It should be the same thing. This looks weird. That's not helping me. Nope. There we go. Yeah, this thing's got a good bit of crud on it. Um... Honestly, I couldn't tell you if it was bad or not since I wrenched on it and it made a whole bunch of popping noises and I don't know. It must have been stuck open because this truck never heated up. So interesting things. This is the gasket I pulled out of there. You can see it's got a little notch in there to fit in snugly. And it tells you which end to go towards the thermostat. It's also very thick. The replacement I got is much thinner. Still has the notch, but it's quite a bit thinner. Honestly, I don't know if this is the factory one or not. Sure does look like it. Hopefully this one seals. Another interesting thing. This is the thermostat I pulled out. This is the replacement one I have. You can tell there's a little bit different. All you Cummins gurus, does this look factory? Let me know in the comments section. Because frankly, I'm just winging it at this point. Interesting note. I didn't see any pookie on this thing when I pulled it off. Thinking because this gasket goes from the thermostat housing into the block. Probably doesn't need it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, lather this up just in case. You know, regrets and all. All right, this is semi cleaned up. We're just going to go ahead and assume that this thermostat was stuck open. I don't know, since I wrangled on it a good bit, I can't really tell if it was open or closed or functional or not. I just know this truck never warmed up. Be honest with you guys and gals, if you're watching this video as a how-to, stop right now. If you haven't caught on, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of winging it and bringing you all along for the ride. If you want some really good how-tos, and he probably even has one on this, and I probably should have looked it up, check out Decent Garage. He does a lot of how-tos on clapped out first-gen Cummins, even though his Cummins swapped crew cab is anything but clapped out. Yeah, he's got a lot of good content. And he doesn't just have one crew cab Cummins. He has two. Let's check him out. Oh, great. Yep, this is already going well. Oh, that, nope, okay, don't want to do that. Yep, because I still got to stab it. Now, even though there wasn't any pookie on this, I'm a little hesitant to reinstall it without any. I want to put a very thin layer of some of this gray pookie on it. Basically, just to make me feel better. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, yeah, I wasn't even close. Helps a good flashlight, folks. I actually see what you're doing. Oh, no. What did I do now? Well, now that I've pushed all that little bit of pookie and put it on there everywhere else, it's probably in the thermostat now. So, you know, this is going on par like it normally does. All right, we're going to hope that um, fixes it. Unless I installed this all wrong and it could just leak like a sieve. All right, next on the list is I'm going to take off this water pump. Again, I don't know if this is what's squeaking. But frankly, I'm just going to try to hit all the main things and hope it goes away. Because a true mechanic would probably diagnose the problem. I'm not a true mechanic, so I just keep replacing parts until it goes away. If this thing had a better stereo, I would have just turned up the stereo. That tends to make most of my problems go away. Well, those don't look original. I think someone's replaced this water pump before. And I seem to remember the uh, previous owner saying it needed a water pump. He had one of those cheap auto parts store ones sitting in the seat. But, um, this is concerning. I'm just going to assume, since this thing already has a semi-new radiator in it, Maybe this thing had a overheating problem at one point. Yeah. Lovely. Well, this doesn't seem to be making any weird noises. We're going to go ahead and replace it. Just to be on the safe side. I guess it looks pretty good too. Don't worry, we got another one. There was a good bit of rust in this system. If y'all remember in previous episodes, I flushed the living crap out of this motor, so there was a lot of death in this brand new radiator. Ah, this new one looks a lot nicer. It is quieter. So I have been informed that, um, I don't have to pookie this, especially with the new O-ring. I'm going to do the right thing, just clean it out with a dirty rag. There we go. One installed water pump. Yeah, and I don't know if that's what was squeaking, but it's one of the things I was going to replace. All right, now that we've done the thermostat and the water pump, let's take off this belt tensioner. Let's see how bad that thing is. A little bit of light on the subject. See if I get lucky, and this be the right socket. Oh, there we go. That thing has obviously been off before. Oh, it is currently supporting this alternator. We should probably uh, reinstall this alternator right quick. And not forget to do things that we were supposed to do earlier. I didn't lose the 10 millimeter. It just stops working. Oh, there it goes. Doing pretty good today, folks. I haven't lost the 10 mil. As you can tell, this looks relatively um, new. Doesn't seem to have any noise damage to it, but... You know, you know how previous Dodge owners are. They might say they replace a lot of parts. 
You don't know the quality of parts that they got. You know what I mean? You just don't know. That being said, apparently I buy the same quality parts. So, you know, previous Dodge owner, same as current Dodge owner. It's important to stay consistent, folks. Good grief, these are even the same brand. They're identical. This is absolutely no improvement. Well, here was a pointless task. I'm literally replacing one item of the same brand with a slightly newer one. Oh, fantastic. Where did I put that bolt? Yeah. So I'll go ahead and take this used one and the old belt, put it in the toolbox, you know, just in case something goes wrong. Spare parts are always a good thing, folks. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot about that thing. That seems to be important. All that arthritis really paying off out right now. All right, guys and gals, now the fun part. Making that look like that. This might be a little bit harder than I was thinking. All right, now we're into belt routing. Unlike that belt tensioner, I like to get my parts from South Texas, deep South Texas. That's where the best parts are made. And they have the best tacos. I think this green will add a nice accent to the, the rust, the engine paint, and the slight bit of despair that this motor emanates. Hey, you got your green South Texas belt. Stare really hard at that picture that's up on the hood, and hopefully you get it right. Huh. Really, really, okay. There it goes. The groove. Huh. How come this doesn't look like my picture? Oh. Oh. Because I did it wrong. Oh, this has got to go. I'm going to have to go borrow some uh, adjustable motivation. All right, now that we've got this adjustable motivator, go ahead and stick it here. Oh, I really should have watched more decent garages videos on this. I've only done this before a couple of times. And how many trucks, how many clapped out Dodges do I need to own to finally figure out how to install a belt? Of course. I managed to do all the wrong things on this. Oh, I keep looking at the wrong line. Oh, well, that's why I keep screwing up. Oh, it helps if you hit it on the grooves. How am I failing so bad at putting a belt on? Oh, there's the problem. Bound down enough on it. Good grief. Oh, apparently, I wasn't pushing this down far enough. So, yep. Again, not a learning channel, folks. Um, unless you were learning what not to do. Now, I just need coolant which I forgot to buy. I wonder if the Dodge Whisperer would notice if I took just, I hope he's got 50-50, because you know, I ain't like you folks up north that know how to mix it properly. If anything, I'll just dump creek water in this thing and let it rip it. All right, after a brief rainstorm, the old Dodge Whisperer went ahead and helped me out, picked me up some antifreeze. Good to see the Thundering roar is still there. Now this is the full strength. Most might mix this accordingly. I'm gonna dump one of these in and then dump a whole bunch of water in there. Now to add water. Don't worry folks. This is GMO free, free range, organic rainwater. Only the best. Guess we need to add more antifreeze. Normally I'd make jokes about living in Texas and not even needing any freeze, but uh, y'all saw what happened. Dark, dark time. Well, even though we're running into the hot months, just in case, we could have a blizzard now. Not leaking, so that's good. Apparently I need more water. Don't worry, folks. More of that uh, organic water. Preheated, because... Apparently the only thing that works inside is the hot water. All right, now the real question is, is replacing all those parts gonna solve the problem? Or did I just waste a whole bunch of time? 
I'm gonna check to make sure the belt's on right again. All right, we replaced the water pump, tension or pulley, thermostat, and the belt. Now, thermostat had nothing to do with the squeaky. This is more about seeing if this truck would heat up. But we're gonna find out on both. One, this thing still squeaks. And two, if it will finally warm up. No, we're not gonna do another burnout. Well, the good news is it's not squeaking anymore. The bad news is we're gonna have to wait for it to heat up. If you drive a clapped out old Cummins, you know that's going to take a while. I don't know. Hang out. Go grab a taco. Find something. I'll let you know if it works. One heading and gave it the high idle. I might speed up the process, I don't know. It's like 80 degrees out here, this thing should warm up eventually, right? Alright, we went ahead and cranked up those RPMs. We're slowly getting there. This truck just takes a long time to heat up. It just must make no horsepower. We'll say the old fast idle cable is coming in handy. Tim cages slowly working its way up. Like really slow. This thing just doesn't want to heat up. Either that or this gauge isn't correct. Nope, that didn't fix it. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. Was it the water pump? Belt tensioner? Belt? Maybe the thermostat. I don't know, it's not squeaking and it does warm up moderately, so I'm going to call this a win. And I didn't hurt myself too much. Are you helping in the shop today, Remy? Are you going to be doing all your supervising? I hope so. Someone's got to keep us in line. <laughs>